Good morning. It is day eight. It's a chilly one this morning. I got uh, everything in my tent packed up. <sighs> Actually, like started doing things around 6:30 as opposed to six, and uh, finally got out of the tent. So, not the jump up at 6 a.m. Uh, plan, but. Uh, you know, probably got roughly six hours sleep. It's pretty hard to get up when you're as exhausted as I am and getting as much exercise as I am with much less. Uh, not that it's not doable, but anyways, I'm up and uh, it's cold. This mountain is blocking the sun. So I thought it was gonna be overcast in the tent. Turns out it's not really. Not too many clouds in the sky at all. So I'm hoping it's gonna be a beautiful day. Just waiting for that sun to peak up behind the mountain and warm things up. I gotta get a fire going here and get some coffee on. Looking really forward to the coffee. And uh, basically just jump on the river and uh, start paddling like crazy. Uh, but I gotta do a trek to get my food barrel. Every day I uh, ditch my food barrel about 100 meters or more from camp. So the bears won't get into it, eat my food, run out of my food, and then eat me. lighting the stove and in anticipation for the sun I got my uh, goal zero Yeti 500 out and uh, it's also charging uh, a camcorder battery and my goal zero Nomad 100 solar panels out too. I figure while I'm packing up camp why not have this working for me so it's kind of passive way to get my batteries charged and well really the only way too. Hard to wrap my head around the scale of everything out here. It's just so grand. Ah, oh, there's the sun back. This is a mixture of three peaches and cream and one apple cinnamon, and it's delish. Mm, two apple cinnamon. This is a five oatmeal morning, ladies and gentlemen. Sweet, delicious coffee. Just the broad sweeping spanses of country here are just so inspiring. It's just one of the, easily one of the most beautiful rivers I've ever paddled and one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life. This is up here with like the Nahani and the Mountain River for sure. I'm so fortunate to have paddled all these rivers and seen all this country and it's not just rivers that I paddle I like to do trips where I go up river and cross heights of land and cross into different watersheds and take routes where I travel on multiple rivers to really experience a full river and given the amount of time you have paddling a river from its headwaters to you know uh, the end of it is is pretty special man this trip's flying by um, I still think about my kids a lot. I miss Hudson and Wesley. I think about them like every day. And I just want to go snuggle the shit out of them when I get home and kiss their little faces. Anyways, yeah, day eight today um, is going to be uh, a, like, I don't want to call it a slog, but I'm going to basically get in the canoe and paddle as far as I possibly can. That's the plan. So, you know, I'm sure I'll stop to fish at the odd eddy get out stretch my legs a couple times if that but it's gonna be about making time because I'm behind time and I, I really should be banging off minimum 50 kilometers today so that's the plan 
So I just saw a smaller size bush plane go by, like a Cessna 187. It looks like it might even be coming into land down river. Um, so, you know, when the river is lower and they, there's a huge gravel bar with tires, they can access spots along a river more easily than a float plane that can't really land um, when a river is too shallow. But anyways, yeah, that's the, uh, I guess this whole trip, the first thing I've seen, plane or anything that I've seen is that bush plane. I don't even know if they saw me here. My first signs of, of people in, in like eight days. I wear uh, wading boots. These are lightweight. They drain so your shoes aren't full of water and uh, they have a lot of protection when you're wading from pinching your toes and banging them, your feet into pointy rocks. Who knows what adventures today will bring. It'd be nice to see some more animals, some more wildlife. Um, I wouldn't doubt if I saw something. This whole area we went through is crazy. Probably one of the best rivers I've ever seen to see dull sheep, which are usually so high. So it's fairly rare to see them as close as I did yesterday. I've seen tons of caribou prints and moose prints all over the place. So hoping I see something today as I push towards the Peel River. Well, I just spied something out of the corner of my eye and eddied out into a slow moving backwater, kind of like a little bay from a, a braid that's uh, been cut off as the water dropped. And I'm reminded how much harder it is to paddle in flat water. But basically what I saw is a cabin and uh, what looks like maybe some communications equipment. So I'm guessing it's like a mining camp here. Maybe uh, the mining camp where I saw the swing bridge is actually here and they, you know, trek way up river or whatever um, to use that swing bridge just because it's the only place anywhere close where the river isn't super wide. Uh, so, or maybe there's a second one, I don't know. But this is pretty spectacular country here and it looks like a flat area that they might be able to land a plane and then dock like a jet boat in here maybe they could bring a jet boat all the way from Fort McPherson which would be like 300 kilometers or more um, and then obviously by snowmobile probably if this river freezes up there'd probably be a route around the areas that didn't freeze so, you know, either way, what, any way you look at it, it's not super easy to access. They sure choose their spots though. It's beautiful. Like a little like lookout perch right there. That's what caught my eye. Look at how beautiful this is though. Well, it looks like someone's been here somewhat recently because there's a pump lying right next to the river there. That is a core sampling box. So someone at least at one time was diamond drilling. Hey, a fish just jumped right there. They use that jet boat to access up and down the river. Oh, looks like someone's here. It's a water tower. Looks like this is an outfitter's camp.
Well, it turns out I'm not the only man in this country. Uh, that plane I saw flying this morning is a Super Cub and they can take off and land almost anywhere on those uh, tires it had on it. And uh, it turns out uh, they landed somewhere down here and I just met three gentlemen that uh, booted it up to these cabins to uh, get things ready for dull sheep hunting season. They're a ram hunting outfitter and man did they pick a beautiful spot. So mostly Americans pay top dollar probably 20 30,000 US a hunt to come in here they camp out here and then they get flown off in the super cub or access different areas with the jet boat and hike up into the sheep country and they hunt doll sheep big doll sheep rams with the big curls so uh, definitely high-end uh, activity that's for sure uh, neat um, to, to just randomly bump into people it kind of felt a little bit weird I said hi and uh, yeah just checked out their camp a little bit and I think I would probably live there of course it's a beautiful day it's not negative 45 like it would be in the winter but uh, yeah they sure pick their spot so anyways just kind of the only real sign of any actual buildings or development other than that old moss top log cabin I saw is this um, ram hunting outfitter so again I'm getting sidetracked I'm supposed to bang off 50k today so I better get back on the river just heading into a massively braided section of the bonnet plume probably one of the most braided sections of river i've ever paddled and the map doesn't really show if which channel is the deepest one i don't know so um, i'm gonna just try to pick my way through and stay with whatever channel has the most current but uh um, the water level has gone down quite a bit since I started this trip. It was almost a week ago where I was up portaging around the canyons and uh, you know the water goes down more quickly every day. So I'm worried maybe that some of the braids might be too shallow to get through and if I get into one of those braids and, I, and there's no more water I might have to walk or drag my boat a long way which would suck obviously but anyways hopefully not hopefully i can just kind of stay with the main flow and i'll be just fine but it's going to be a little confusing uh figuring out where i am on the map and roughly which is the best way to go i mean there's only so much you can do and the rest is guesswork at a certain point which way to go No idea. Very confusing here. Trying to choose the channel that has the most water in it. it. Doesn't seem like any of them really do. But it's looking like I'm getting pushed to the left, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. Usually the outside uh, end of the river has the most current, the fastest current. One, two, three, four, five different potential ways here. I think I picked the right one though. Well, here's an interesting scenario. I don't know if I want to go right down this tiny channel. There could be sweepers in there. Oh, I could have gone through there. I feel like I've gone like triple the distance because I'm just going like this, following the braids in the river. ship will always be safer in the harbor but that's not what ships were built to do just like with people we're built to do big things our bodies are built to do incredible things our minds can do incredible things and we'll definitely be safer if we just stay home and take the easier route in life which is fine it wasn't my path. It's been way more scary, way more of an adventure. The adventures themselves and also the adventure of trying to hack out a living in a profession, if you even want to call it that, that really hadn't really been done before.
When I use my compass, I can get a much better idea as to where I am on the topographic map. The river pushes along and it goes back and forth through braids and it's hard to know which turn you're on a lot of the time. Uh, the mountains can help in a lot of occasions when, especially when one has a prominent feature is close to the river and these kinds of things, but it can be tricky sometimes. Um, and then, you know, I do have a GPS too that I could pull out, but then I'm panning and I'm trying to find the GPS location on the map. I have northings and eastings and, and whatnot on here, but then I'm going to be having to look up my location and it takes a long time. So sometimes I just pull out the compass, I save batteries on my GPS and I just, you know, if, if the curve is going this way and I'm pointing let's say in this case north that means okay well i must be on this curve because if i was on this one i'd be pointing west for example almost went down the wrong channel there it's moving around some like permanent islands with trees on them in with you here. I've gone about 15 kilometers since I passed the outfitters cabins and um, I've been dealing with some heavy headwinds. Uh, it's making it really challenging because um, my boat is trimmed a little stern heavy and that headwind just wants to weather vane me and spin me backwards pointing my nose up river. So I'm really expending a lot of energy just trying to keep straight and um, also uh, it's I have to paddle a lot harder because if I don't paddle at all uh, my downriver travel is greatly reduced because the wind is blowing up river um, so it's like I should have done like at least 20 to 25 K in that time and this wind is really slowing my progress unfortunately um, I might pull over and just like try to whip a huge boulder on top of my spray jack in the bow to try to uh, to try to trim my boat more bow heavy that way the wind will point me into it yeah first cast So it's middle of the day, so they're not in, in the shallowest part of the eddy feeding. You gotta go for them a little deeper, but you can entice them to bite still. So that's dinner for tonight. Awesome. I love these fish. There's another one. Wow. That one's got some really nice colors. So I've been battling some pretty wicked headwinds now for quite some time and uh, every time the wind picks up or I take my hand off my paddle to get a drink of water or something it just blows up and spins me around so I'm using tons of energy just to try to keep my boat pointed straight. You know I cruise past this uh, beautiful tributary with uh, one of the nicest back eddies and crystal clear water pouring out of it so I pulled over and uh, caught uh, a bunch of fish kept two real nice size really for dinner and um, I you know I don't really want to wade out the wind it's almost it's very challenging to paddle in it though and I might look for a boulder and maybe just even stick a boulder on top of my spray deck at the bow just to try to 
trim me at least even or ideally a little bow heavy so that wind uh, won't try to spin me and point my bow back up river to actually keep me kind of pointed into the wind um, because right now paddling into the wind stern heavy the wind's just trying to weather vane me and blow the lightest point of my boat up river and uh, it's just quite a challenge anyways I'm just gonna clean up these fish and then uh, I'm gonna get back at it but uh, it's no more nice easy downhill cruising which is too bad because I've made it 20 clicks out of the 50 that I want to do today and it's already about 3 in the afternoon so it looks like best case scenario I'm gonna be pushing well into the night again and, and not making camp till 9 or 10 which is crazy but got to do what you got to do long pit stop but uh, I was getting killed by this headwind and it was one of the best little looking fishing holes yet so I had to uh, fish there a bit caught dinner and flip my maps over so ready to bang off another 20k um, I've done 20k a little over 20k so far today I also put a big boulder just in the front of my canoe it's sort of being cradled by the spray deck a bit and I can already tell that it's helping a bit it's sort of like uh, it's brought my nose down a bit so that should definitely help me paddle into this headwind although the headwind seems to have died off a bit anyway so hopefully we're in good shape well, I just stopped for a pee and some water and uh, I'm doing okay. Um, this boulder in the front has really helped and I can kind of get out of the headwinds when I'm around on one side of a bend. So they've died off a bit too. I've probably done about 30K. So I got 20K off to, to 20K left to bang off and I'm hoping I can finish it before nine. We'll see. Um, I noticed some contour lines crossing the river which means the current's gonna pick up, which is good. The mountains there for a while where I was seeing the, the sheep were right close to the river, rising right up out of the river. Then they kind of started stepping back a little, which was still very impressive, sort of a broader, uh, amazing view. And now they're, they're kind of petering out a little bit um, or just becoming more set back and not as rugged as we reach uh, the Peel River where the Maybe be a little more rolling. Still beautiful, impressive mountains, but uh, not as dramatic and incredibly beautiful, but just a little bit different. Dance of the cliff dwelling swallow and the rough leg hawk plays it sprawl out in the Yukon once again. Pretty cool. I'm watching a whole ton of swallows that have a bunch of nests burrowed into the side of this bluff, and two hawks are circling around, likely um, you know wanting to eat some of the swallows and what have you. And uh, the swallows are not happy about it. Cruising back and forth, calling. Um, probably looking for a meal as well. Well, it is 7 p.m. and I've done over 40k. Pretty freaking good. I think I might just like push on until 10 or I might just camp in about 5 10k. We'll see. Depends if I can, if I pass like a perfect spot, I might not be able to pass it up. Oh, 
moose. That was cool. Small bull. But uh, fortunately it ran away before I could get the camera up. Got to find a reason. A reason things went wrong. Got to find a reason why my money's all gone. Life is too short, so love the one you got Cause you might get run over and you might get shot Well, I've done over 60k today Which means I have 120k to my pickup spot at the mouth of the Snake River um, Which is on the Pia So that means as of now I have 60k to the confluence of the Bonnet, Plume and Peel and then another 60k along the Peel to Taco Bar which is basically at the mouth of the snake where I'm getting picked up. It's a gravel bar and there's enough water there where they can land. And I have um, tomorrow and the next day and then my pickup arrives at 2 30 the following day um, so you know i would have a couple hours to paddle but ideally i would be there the day after tomorrow an extra day would be perfect i'm supposed to have an extra day but just because of things outside of my hands i wasn't able to get to mayo um, on time well it's uh, almost 10, freaking absolutely beautiful out. So everything around here has either wet sand or large rocks. So I got one with both and I'll figure out which one I like better. Well, this is home for the night. Wasn't much around here. All the gravel bars have like huge boulders or wet mud. So I kind of have one that's a bit of both. There's a bit of lumpy elevated spot there, but nothing great to set up a tent on. So I think I did just about as well as I could do for this stretch of river. Anyways, um, I'm just gonna get my tent set up, uh, change out of these, uh, uh, wet socks and dry suit pants, haul my boat up and uh, get those fish um, cooking up on the fire and uh, hopefully try to get to bed before one in the morning so I can get up early and give her tomorrow. But uh, beautiful day today. Um, did over 60K, which was awesome. I stopped in at these cabins that I saw. It was a, a Ram hunting outfitters uh, headquarters, just very off grid obviously I'd seen some guides flown in in a super cub just on tires and actually uh, saw them so I went up to the this this outfitters cabin and actually saw those people which was I guess kind of neat just to hear about why they're there and what they do found a beauty little honey hole too which was awesome so uh, loaded in on some nice grayling but uh, I did get plagued by a pretty strong headwind which did hold me back some and I had to grab a huge boulder and put it in the bow of my boat and then I saw a bunch of uh, swallows which are nesting in the side of a bluff getting attacked by some hawks and vice versa. So that was kind of interesting. Anyways, uh, yeah, beautiful evening here, which is great. The weather's on my side. Um, bugs aren't the best, but uh, I guess we're kind of down out of the mountains now. So I might be getting chewed on a little bit more by bugs at the lower elevations. Um, anyways, yeah time to get at it and uh, get food going get the tent set up etc etc I didn't film setting up the tent today
I've been looking forward to eating this fish for hours. Mmm. Absolutely perfectly cooked. Oh, just nailed the grayling today. Perfect size for food amount versus flavor. Cooked to perfection. Not too dry. What a great meal after a long day on the river. All right, guys. Nighty night. And I'll see you in the morning. Day nine is tomorrow.